Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Rabia Tuhusna And in this video consists of how my friends and I conducted a project entitled The Inculcations of HOTS or Higher Order Thinking Skill in Teaching and Learning Hmm, before I go further, do you aware why education is important in our life? Ah, let me explain to you briefly so education is a basic need in human life to ensure that we are able to produce a knowledgeable society for the betterment of country in many aspects of life. Therefore, education is one of the sectors that contribute to the growth of human capital. Also, according to Othman and Muhammad in 2014, the implementations of education namely as a development agent whereby these sectors connect information, skills, opportunity, interests, and other human content that actually consider as a human capital to be more dynamic, creative, and progressive in this dimension in order to help the country achieve its goal of becoming a developed and high-income economy. And this demonstrates that education can be the main component for instilling, evaluating, and increasing productivity among humans through its implementations. As a result, educational structure is very vital to have a strategy in achieving its goal of producing civilized individuals who are capable in preserving their life. Besides, there is a concept that should be consensus in education known as the way of thinking. Why is it vital in education? It is because to ensure that education meets the balance in knowledge, skill and aspects of life. And this thinking has been classified into two ways, namely critical thinking and also creative thinking. As mentioned by Critical Thinking Corporations in 2006, critical thinking is actually a skill that goes beyond memorization. It means whenever students think critically, they are actually inspired to think for themselves, able to challenge hypotheses, to evaluate and integrate events, and they also can go further by creating their own new hypotheses and testing them against the evidence that they own. It can be seen clearly that the critical thinking is a perspective way of thinking to enable students to be a deep thinker, which means an individual who is able to think intensely and sharpen their thinking process in more ideal ways. Wait, what about creative thinking? So creative thinking is also an essential thinking process that should be highlighted among students in order to make them expand their thinking and lead them to practice more inquisitive mind. So creative thinking is a concept that involves the creations of anything new or unique. Flexibility, originality, fluency, imagery, associative thinking, attribute listing, metaphorical reasoning, and false relationship are all required in the creative thinking. This shows that the goal of creative thinking is to entertain interests of people and also encourage them to think outside of their box. So what is hot, everyone? Hot? Hot. Okay, as we all know that the requirements of thinking in education is very essential. So, HOTS has been implemented in education system to improve teaching and also learning for becoming more efficient. And according to curriculum Bahagian Pembangunan in 2014, higher order thinking skill defined as the ability in using reasoning and reflection to apply knowledge, skills, and belief to solve problems. And it even involves about making decisions innovate and attempt to develop something new. So, it can be seen here that the purpose of the implementation illustrates that teaching of hearts is essential in helping students to sharpen their thinking skills. Furthermore, HOTS also has been structured by following a concept known as Bloom's taxonomy. The concept consists of elements which should be concerned in teaching and learning to be more effective for teachers and as well for the students. So in 2015, 
York et al. has stated that the Bloom's taxonomy is a comprehensive tool for teaching and learning that used widely in thinking skills. The goal of the concept is also to encourage higher order thinking skills in education. For example, analyzing, evaluating, instead of having actual memorization, and as well as involving cognitive, emotional, and psychomotor skills. This all abilities including in hearts is to assist students to have a high enhancement for developing their thinking skills and getting to cope along with the learning in 21st centuries as well. It is because their learning of heart is unintentionally capable in making students able to facing challenges in real world with their developed skills. Therefore, if we acknowledge that the educational system in Malaysia has established formulation of HOTS for both primary and also secondary schools to ensure individuals can be trained from the early education and it indirectly improve the quality of the student for letting them have preparedness and readiness to survive for higher education and outside of the world as well. Assalamualaikum, my name is Muhammad Ashraf bin Alhamudin. I am in charge of formulating the questionnaires to get the student's perspective on higher order thinking. The survey seeks to answer two research questions. The first one is what are the student's perspective on heart? And the second one is to find out about what are the relationships of heart inculcation from secondary to undergrad level education. Alright, the items from the first section of the survey were adapted from the work of Jusnaini. Because we are doing convenient sampling, we chose all undergraduate students of IUM to participate. In return, we got a 100% turnout rate from al Kulia, although there is a huge disparity between the responses, with Kulia of Education being the largest respondent with 44 responses, in contrast with Kulia of Pharmacy with only one participant. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and hello. My name is Susna Saifuddin, matric number 2026544. And today I'm going to talk about the teacher interviews. So for the teacher interviews, we use the qualitative method where we derive the interviews via WhatsApp. So we contacted these teachers via WhatsApp and then we got them to answer our questions. And we sourced our questions from two different articles. Uh, we adapted and adopted the questions from the appendices or the questions part of these two articles. The first one being the implementation of higher audit thinking skills for teaching and learning. And the second one being fostering problem solving and creative thinking in the classroom, cultivating a creative mind. So we adapted and adopted the questions from these two articles, sent it to review to doctor. And then after being reviewed, we used these questions to start the teacher interviews. So for the first teacher, he was actually my former BM tuition teacher. He taught me from when I was in um, Form 3 up until Form 5. Uh, he also taught uh, my siblings before me. So he has a very vast experience in his field. He has been teaching the Malay language for about 31 years. So he is also currently a BM secondary school teacher in an Islamic school in Kuala Lumpur. He used to teach a normal uh, government school, but now he teaches in an Islamic school. So um, the way I acquired or I uh, approached him for the interview is that I texted him via WhatsApp and then sent him a file containing the questions for the interview and then he returned those questions back to me almost immediately and then uh, that's how I got the interview from him. Moving on to the second teacher, uh, he's actually also a secondary school teacher but teaching English in a secondary school in Kedah. He was kind enough to provide us with some examples of materials that he curated for his school. So he provided us with some slides and some files containing containing the hot materials that he curated for his school and he is also very experienced in his field he has been teaching english uh, for about 28 years and the way uh, i acquired uh, the interviews from him is uh, by contacting uh, his daughter so his daughter is actually my classmate so i contacted my classmate and uh, asked her if uh, her father was interested in answering some interview questions and he was interested in answering the questions. So he uh, looked at the questions, uh, answered them, returned it to me via um, 
his daughter. That's how I got the interview from him. And then for the third teacher, she's actually also an English teacher, but teaching a primary school in Johor. So I was connected to her via a friend. She's actually my friend's aunt. So I contacted my friend and then my friend sent the questions to her aunt and then her aunt uh, gave the questions back to her and my friend returned it back to me. So she is actually also very experienced in her field. She has been teaching English in primary school for also about 30, 31 years. As for the last teacher, uh, he's actually a former teacher of our, one of our group mates. He's an English teacher from Johor. He teaches the normal secondary school syllabus, but he also teaches MUAT. MUAT actually stands for Malaysian University English Test. So this test is uh, required if you want to enter any um, government or public universities in Malaysia. So the uh, syllabus is a bit different from the normal secondary school syllabus while it being uh, well it has its similarities it also has its differences because it's uh, in a slightly higher level than the normal secondary school syllabus so that's all for me thank you assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh my name is mama aiman bi azmi and i will continue this presentation regarding high oratorical skills in islamic perspective okay um, for your information, humans are a beautiful creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because human is endowed with intellect to overcome many obstacles in the life. And it is also due to the ability and capability of the human mind to acquire and develop knowledge to achieve current technological advances. And as in horse, which means high oratorical skills had been introduced in education to students, it also can be related to the Islamic perspective. The encouragement to think already been emphasized in the Quran since the very beginning of the emergence of Islam. The first surah revealed to Prophet Muhammad wasallam was Surah Al-Alaq, a surah that encourages the Prophet Muhammad to read. And in the first one, which means, read a prophet in the name of your Lord who created. In short, this verse gives an unmistakable signal and order in the field of education. The word Iqra itself, which means read, mentioned by the Malaikat Jibril repeatedly to Rasulullah SAW, emphasized that humankind should study, think, and seek knowledge. And if we examine in more depth, this verse educates and invites believers to become knowledgeable people. Human beings are also urged, human beings are urged to consider what Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala calls us to reflect as the hidden purposes and the creation of miracles. And when we reflect on each detail, it will help us understand and appreciate the authority, wisdom, knowledge, art, and other attributes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Furthermore, human beings are also born in a state of purity and unawareness of anything. And early education is vital to shaping a person's life, starting from childhood. The verse of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in Surah An Nahl, verse seventy-eight, means, "It is God." who brought you out of your mother's womb, knowing nothing, and gave you hearing and sight and mind so that you might be thankful. And in addition, Allah has also emphasized in His word in Surah Al-Zumar about a difference between the knowledgeable and the ignorant, which means, can such people be equal to the one who worships during the hours of the night, prostrating himself and standing, fearing the hereafter, and having hopes in His Lord's mercy, saying, can those who know and those who do not know become equal? It is only the people of understanding who are receptive to the advice. Okay, um, this verse clearly shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a high enough appreciation to intelligent, thoughtful, and knowledgeable people. And knowledgeable people. Okay, and in this verse, the word Ula Alba in Arabic can be interpreted as a rational person or a person who has a heart and has wisdom consisting of scholars, intellectual, or anyone who use the heart and intelligence to observe and think all events on this earth. And the next thing is, how actually thoughts relates to Islam? There is an Arabic term for thinking. It is al-fikri that relates to the activities of the akal or human mind to know, understand and solve problems logically and reasonably. And thinking leads 
humans to develop a thought, idea, opinion, and perception on specific subjects. Therefore, it will also guide students in school in their acquisition of knowledge and science. And high order thinking skills also related to Tafat Kuk. And according to Al Ghazali, in his book, Mukashafa Al Kulub, Al Mukara Illa Al Alam Al Gulub, has explained, Tafakur is a way of thinking deeply, continuously until the wisdom and the rational comes out, which can produce knowledge confidently. And it is also recognized as an act of worship or a form of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it also rewarded when done with sincerity and good intentions. And the, uh, and the importance of inculcation of thoughts, which means high rating skills, to a student in school has been a topic of discussion and concern among educators. This mindset of thinking can be trained and nurtured in everyone. Moreover, the entire educational program should be retouched and revived until the student's life is accustomed to high order thinking skill. And lastly, students are encouraged to think and analyze creative and critical thinking to meet human demands and face modernity. Islam also advises Muslims to practice the teaching of Islam with complete knowledge understanding and faith rather than blind imitation. Okay, that's all from me. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And I will pass it to my friend. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Izzah Iman bin Rafilus. Metric number 1815195. We'll now proceed our group presentation with the findings of our study, which are survey to the undergraduate students and also interviews to school teachers. Now, let's have a look to the survey finding first. We have collected about 107 students that answered our survey that comes from three different campuses of IIUM, which are IIUM Gomba, IIUM Kuantan, and IIUM Pago. The survey contains three main components that related with higher order thinking skills, which are analyzing, evaluating, creating, and also we include the past secondary education experiences as one of item that related with our topic. For analyzing part, we can see that most of students, which are consist of 67% are agree that analyzing skills is applied in higher order thinking skills. Some of examples that relate with these skills are they are the able to compare people's opinions, they are able to analyze main ideas of a text, they are able to solve questions that given by their lectures when carry out group discussions, activities, and more. This shows that analyzing skills is well applied in higher order thinking skills. Next, for evaluating skills, we can see that about 71.5% of students agree that this skill is also applied in higher order thinking skills such as able to make conclusions in their own words, able to ask the lecturers if they are not understand a part of their lesson for the day, they are also able to relate the, material, the materials based on what they, they have already know with the materials that they learn and many more. This is surely showing that evaluating skills are one of the most important skills in higher order thinking skills. Now we're moving on for creating skills. We have about 71.4% of students agree that creating is well applied in higher order thinking skills. For instance, they are able to answer the questions based on their perspectives they are given opportunity from, from the lecturers to express their opinion about the material being studied, the ability to provide input feedbacks and criticism when be asked by the lecturers is, uh, is also can be observed and many more. So creating is also well developed in higher order thinking skills among students. Last but not least, we also ask about their past secondary education experience with higher order thinking skills to relate with their current studies. From here, about 
56.8% agreed that higher order thinking skills that they deemed in their secondary education level influenced their performance in the, in the university. They also thought that the inculcation of higher order thinking skills in secondary school syllabus are effective and well blend with them. This also helped them to achieve the best result in school. Therefore, we know that higher order thinking skills are very helpful for students in surviving their university life. Now, we're moving on to teachers' interviews input that we get from four of teachers that we interviewed before. We highlighted few main points from, the, from all the interviews. First, the teachers, they are very well known with the inculcation of higher order thinking skills element in the syllabus. Therefore, they are well equipped with various methodologies to ensure higher order thinking skills elements in various levels of studies are blend well. Second, during the teaching and learning session, teachers act as facilitators that will assist students, whereby students are required to have their, or their own opinion first regarding the task given from the teacher before the discussion table is open to all students. And finally, the, impl the implementation of higher order thinking skills could be improvised better to, to in line with the Malaysian Education Development Plan 2015-2025 and Industrial Revolution 4.0 and also can be utilized by the students to be applied in their daily life application. As the conclusion for our topic, here are a few points that we can highlight. First, higher order thinking skills are one of the important components that should be emphasized towards students in developing better thinking culture among them. Second, Ministry of Education should provide more trainings to the teachers and also enhance the existing, the existing methods to produce better future generation. Third, Students also perceive higher order thinking skills as an important concept to be learned in schools and they are able to engage in higher order thinking skills effectively. Last but not least, they see the relevance of their past higher order thinking skills experience in secondary school in their tertiary education setting. That's all from us. Thank you and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.